Let's be honest, grinding through 50 pages of PDF abstracts to find the five papers you actually want to read is its own special kind of academic misery. But those days could be behind us. ChatGPT has just released its new agent model and I'm very impressed with what it can do for academia and research. It may be taking over those boring mundane tasks that we've been wanting to outsource for years. And this is what it looks like. So when you log into ChatGPT, this is what it looks like. Look at this, good to see you, Andy. Do you really mean that ChatGPT or you're just saying it to make me feel good? Anyway, good to see you too, I guess. Um, here we go, this is what we want. Click here and then agent mode. Agent mode is what we want. We click agent mode and then you get all of these magical options. Look at this, suggested, you can do all this. Reporting, actions, it can even do things online for you. Then we've got spreadsheets and presentations. Now, the thing about this agent is that it gives ChatGPT its own little window, its own little like workspace, its own computer that it can do stuff on the internet for you. And I've been amazed at what it can do. Obviously, it's got loads of limitations, especially for academic work, but you may be able to replace all of that sort of like hard admin work with a simple prompt. And we like the sound of that, don't we? What if you could put in one prompt to find all of the academic literature that you want to read? Well, now that's no longer a dream. Ah, oh, it's real. All right then, so this is what I asked ChatGPT agent to do. It said, you are a research assistant specializing in academic literature discovery, search Google Scholar, PubMed, uh, and look for papers on climate change. And then here's the thing, I put in loads of sort of like different uh, criteria that I was looking for. This is something that previously older generations of ChatGPT that didn't have an agent really struggled with. So it's gonna look for papers between that, well, that's kind of easy, but only include empirical studies with sample Sample sizes over 50, summarize each paper's abstract in three bullet points, note the methodology output. So what we're doing is we are adding loads and loads of prompts that normally we would do one after the other after the other, but now we can sort of like squish them all together to make a mega prompt and allow ChatGPT's agent to go away and do it all for us. So it worked for 20 minutes. That saved me 20 minutes, look at that. 20 whole minutes, 32 searches, 258 sources, that would have taken taken me more than 20 minutes, but now I can go away. What can you do with that 20 minutes? I don't know. Go to the toilet. Go to your favorite toilet and sit there, scroll on your phone in the cubicle, and just pretend the world doesn't exist. Isn't that what we all do at some point? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, this is what happened. You can see here we've got uh, the rank, study year, and also here's the three bullet points for each thing. It stayed on track. It went away and did stuff online. I want to show you actually what it does. So if I go to reports and I go to research non-toxic, blah, 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 um, you can see that actually it opens up its own computer and you can interact that computer in some interesting ways. So here it is setting up my desktop. Thanks very much, chat GPT and understood. Then it's thinking and then you'll get to see a little computer pop up and there you can see it, how it's interacting with the websites. Here we are. I need to do that. So it goes away. And also you can click here. You've got activity, which just lists what's it, what it's doing. Him. This is the desktop view. You can take over browser and you can just stop it from doing whatever it is doing anyway. So this is what it looks like while it's working. And I think it's a pretty cool interface. It can go away, it can click, it can dismiss pop-ups, it can click on things, it can go deeper, it can summarize, it can find stuff in the websites. Oh, that is what we want to replace, isn't it? So here we are, here's the summary that it created for the uh, literature review that I wanted to create. And here it says, here is the bib text that I asked it for. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So does it get much better than that? Well, it can do some pretty funky things. Check these out. What if you've just collected some data and you're like, hey agent, do this stuff for me. Maybe you're not an absolute pro in Excel, in R, in SPSS. I'm not, I hated it. So I can now look at a chat GPT agent to do that sort of hard initial work for me. Now it's not replacing me, it's just allowing me to get a first touch point.
on my data. Ooh, look at that lovely data. Oh no, that was the wrong action, wasn't it? Anyway, this is what I did is I put in some um, demo regression data set that I wanted it to work with. We've got age, we've got study hours and exam score. And then here I've got, you are a data analyst using the upload data set, run a regression, blah, blah, blah. Use these things and provide these things. So once again, the great thing about the agent is we can just mash all of these things together. Something typically we'd have to put individually. So then it says understood. Yes, sir. I'll upload the data set and then I'll do all of this stuff. And then it worked for two minutes. That's not too bad, is it? Look, you can get a replay of what it actually did and you can take over the browser. Anyway, you can do all of this stuff, but it used my two searches. It found 18 sources. It was finding stuff online that would help sort of like represent my data, which I really, really like. So here we go down here. You can see it's got a summary of the statistics and it's got the variable, the count, the mean, medium, standard deviation, blah, 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 blah. And then it's got regression analysis. This is something I asked it for. I asked it for the regression analysis. And it's got exam score, study age, and uh, uh, study hours. And let's see. Okay, yeah. here we go. And this is what it created here. So would that have taken me more than, let's have a look, two minutes? Yes, it would have taken me more than two minutes because I'd have to learn all this stuff and open up all of the different programs and do all of the sort of like normal admin work of research. But now I can get a first touch point on my data with a single prompt. And it also says here, suggest the next test to check robustness. It looked online and it said, maybe this test, maybe this test, I can go away. I now have a next jumping off point for all of the things that I want to explore about my data. Love it has never been easier to do this. And uh, it could even replace something like Julius AI, but maybe not quite yet. Anyway, there's something else that I really liked and uh, I think you'll like it too. Check this out. We're always told as scientists and researchers, oh, communicate more, do the communication. Do they not understand that the most important and the most frustrating part of doing a presentation isn't the standing there and talking, it's the preparation beforehand. What if this agent can help you do the majority of the preparation so you didn't have to worry about all of the hours sunk in to give in a perfect 10 minute presentation. Anyway, so here I've uploaded a PDF document of one of my papers and all I've done is asked it to go through that PDF document and turn it into a presentation. So it says, yeah, sure, I'll start by examining the contents of the PDF. And this is just a normal paper. A lot of people people do this. They produce a paper and then at a conference they talk about that paper. Well now we can do the extraction of certain bits but you'll see that this is where I started to find the limits of its real sort of like usefulness for academia and research. So this is what it kicked out after working for 18 minutes. Would it take me more than 18 minutes to create what it created? Yes. So it is a time saver. Now I can go in and just sort of like create um, a little bit more of a flow of the story that I want to tell. You'll see that some of the figures and stuff will have to be updated but ultimately this is what it created look i can download it um, as a pptx which is a powerpoint thing which we love because we love powerpoint in the research world don't we um okay let's cancel that and then let's just open it up bonk this is what it has created now is this the perfect, most design efficient, most amazing presentation ever? No, no, of course it's not. But it's done pretty good. Like it even generated this little kind of like uh, image here, which is carbon nanotubes and wires. It's not what my silver nanowires look like, by the way, but you know, it tried and I like that. I respect the trying. Anyway, so it could tell you that, you know, if you wanted a fancy um, diagram, then why not? I mean, that looks good enough to include in a presentation if you wanted to. Um, and then this is a web preview, so it may not reflect the actual formatting. All right, well, we don't want to do that, do we? Let's have a look at the actual formatting because that's what we care about. Let's open it up and have a look to see what's going on. So here it is in PowerPoint and uh, yeah, you know, it's clickable, it's move, is it movable? No, I can't move that. Anyway, oh, because I didn't say edit. Anyway, you get the idea or you can edit it if you want to. Um, and then we've got outline. Would I include that? No, no, not really. No, I think that's a bit superfluous. So I, would, I would delete that one. But look here, background and motivation. That's pretty good. I like that. That figure of merit is rubbish. You'd format that better, but it's good that it's there and you can start working with it. It's far easier to sort of like edit stuff and change the design than actually sort of like generating the content and the ideas for the paper and the flow. And here you can see it's produced 12 
uh, slides, which means that we're probably going to be about a 12 to 15 minute presentation, um, depending on how verbose you like to be while you're presenting and how much theatrics you want to in inject into the uh, performance or not performance, just the normal talk if it's just a normal talk for you. Anyway, um, this is, yeah, background. We've got like alternative. I wouldn't include that one. That's nothing to do with my work. Um, but this is where it starts to get interesting. Look, it knows uh, what figures to extract and it hasn't extracted the figure captions. It's just extracted the figures and it's got some stuff here that obviously you can make bigger and make a more, uh, make it easier to read for other people. Then we've got planarization and characterization techniques. Well, it's characterization techniques of the planarization. So it's got some of the details not quite right, but we've got four point probe, UV viz spec. Okay, that's exactly what's happened. And look, it's even got a caption that it extracted and put separately from the figure like that, like that. Here we go, electrical and uh, optical performance is extracted that. It's got surface morphology, it understands the things. It knows that we should have about three bullet points per um, slide. It's not using too much text, but I'd probably use even less than this and mainly focus on the figures, but that's just my own personal preference. And then we've got device integration. It's actually got a, a schematic of the device, which is true. It did do that. Is, was that in there? I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, it is good that it sort of like knew that it was in layers and those layers were different and you could go in and just change these for what they actually were. I don't think M molybdenum oxide. I don't think I used that. Anyway, no, that's, this is what it looks like. And conclusions and outlook. And then we get the clap slide. Oh, thank you very much. You're the best. And uh, now let's go to lunch. That is an okay talk template to start with. Obviously you change it, but in terms of just saving you loads of time, Getting the, the, getting the paper, extracting the figures, putting them into a presentation, it is a massive time saver. And I think that is what this agent is all about, saving you time doing the manual sort of like uh, copying, pasting, extracting, searching, clicking, deleting, finding, paying, all of that stuff agent can do for you. And uh, it's only gonna get more powerful, love it. If you like AI agents for academia and research, go check out other ways that I've used GenSpark AI for making your research easier. Go check it out.